This is Game Chat Board episode 136. Psionix rockets towards epic heights. You found Game Chat with Buona. Welcome to the show. Now here's your host, Buona McCall, with all the gaming news of this week. Uh, by the way, that's me. Greetings, folks, and welcome to episode 136 of Game Chat. Well, I got a great show lined up for you, about four stories to talk about. It was kind of dry. Um, kind of kind of dry news this week. There wasn't a whole lot to find in terms of meaty, meaty stuff. Uh, uh, we're coming up close to the summer, and you know, a lot of people looking forward to E3. That's going to have a lot of news. That's going to have a lot of news and stuff in it. And um, uh, just, so there's just not too much going on. I mean, a couple announcements were made today in the virtual reality space which i don't you know I, I follow but i'm not a huge fan of it so we're going to talk about some of those vr things and some of the some of the moves that were made with companies uh nintendo news and a little bit of star citizen stuff so i'm not going to belabor the moment anymore let's get right to it our first story we're going to talk about valve valve is officially made inroads into the vr headset realm the valve index vr headset is going to officially cost a thousand dollars for the entire package it comes by way of diverge.com and it's pretty uh pretty substantial in terms of what hardware hardware offerings that valve has offered in the past we've seen stuff like the steam box and the steam controller and uh not a whole lot of stuff beyond that that i can remember that was substantial uh they did partner with htc for a long time to create some steam compatible vr headsets and i think a lot of what they learned from that partnership is kind of what fueled the valve index now the vr kit costs 999 dollars is going to ship by june 28th 2019 i want to apologize for my allergies in advance i'm struggling to talk hello spring how you doing um it's going to include the headset, the Valve Index controllers, and the Index Base Station, all of which you can buy separately. So if you just want the headset and you already have a compatible base station or a headset, I'm sorry, uh, if you already have a compatible controller or a base station, you can just buy the headset for $499 or if you buy the whole kit, it's going to run you around $1,000. Um, it's going to be high fidelity. That's one of the big things they're going to be going for here uh 1440 by 1600 resolution rgb lcds uh and it's going to be 120 hertz with an experimental 144 hertz um it's so much money and <laughs> technology definitely targeting the enthusiast crowd this is not someone this is not for someone who just wants to ease into the vr market i think this is for people who have tried oculus rifts or maybe even have a, a, a HTC Vive already, but don't want to get the HTC Vive Pro. Um, there also some. There was also some spinoff news that Valve says they're going to be releasing a VR first-person title soon. I don't think it's in this article, but uh, that's kind of big news that Valve is going to attempt to make a game again after <laughs> Artifact, which was a complete failure by their own words um so valve's gonna take another take another stab at making another game and it's gonna be vr only like i said i'm not a big fan of vr i don't think vr uh personally you know this is an opinion thing i don't think it's i don't think it's all that great i don't um i think the technology has improved from what we've seen in the 80s and, and 90s and stuff but i think the experiences are disjointed and i think it's in a very experimental tech demo format in a lot of games um some exceptions come to mind elite dangerous is probably the biggest exception it seems like the game was even made for vr but even with that it has its own quirks and issues um <clears throat> so yeah this is a big deal big deal in vr news valve is entering the vr market we now have a bunch of new players in this market hopefully the prices will drop this one's a doozy <coughs> this one's a doozy though nine hundred ninety nine dollars is crazy check it out guys over on the verge.com they got the details the valve index vr is out 
on the news waves and will be shipping in June 2019. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Psyonix. <clears throat> Psyonix, the makers of Rocket League, the car soccer game that everybody loves so much. It's been a very successful title over the years. Today, Psyonix uh, announced that they're going to be joining Epic Games. Oh, boy. Whenever we bring up that name, people start to internally bleed and their eyes start to do things that they aren't supposed to. I don't know. People just lose their minds. But Epic Games is going to be purchasing Psyonix. Um, actually, it's already done. They're officially joining it. Um, <clears throat> so on, this, on the post that I'm linking to in the description at rocketleague.com, it says, what does this mean for Rocket League and this community? We're happy to say that the answers are only positive. Uh, Rocket League has always been, always be a community, community-driven game. And now, be, and now that we have joined forces with Epic, we will be able to serve our community in even bigger and better ways. Um, I think the biggest thing is that people are wondering what's going to happen to the Steam version. Uh, and Epic has said that, in a nutshell, I'm going to try to summarize it as much as possible. It's a lot of PR speak. The game is going to be on Steam in terms of support forever. That's, that's pretty much what's going down. So if you're worried about patches, updates, and all kinds of stuff, that's always going to be on Steam. What's not clear is that... They have announced that this that the game will be coming to the Epic Game Store. And I think once that happens, it won't be available to purchase anymore on Steam, like much of the other titles that have moved to the Epic Game Store. But if you already have the game, you're fine. I don't know of that many people personally that are looking to buy Rocket League. Um, like my, my inner circle and people that I know online and even the groups of people that I talk to, most people who... Excuse me. Most people that I talk to, uh, they either have tried the game, own it, liked it. They've tried the game, don't like it, own it. And people who are not even going to try it and don't own it. So those potential new people that want to buy on Steam, worst case scenario, are going to have to buy on Epic Game Store, which to me is not a huge deal. Um, DLC support is going to remain on Steam. Support, uh, patch support is going to remain on Steam. Um, I don't see any, I don't see any of that changing. If it does change, I still don't see that being a big issue. Why? Well, if you've been listening to my podcast, you know I don't care about the Epic Game Store. It's just another program, another launcher. All my games launch from shortcuts on my desktop anyway, so I don't really care. Um, that's a whole other can of worms, you know, the whole Epic Game Store versus Steam. That I'm not going to rehash again because I have a whole episode. A tale of two rants where I go crazy on that topic. Um, but this is good news for, for Psyonix. Um, Psyonix, yeah. Make sure I'm pronouncing that right. It's good news for them. Because they've been working with Epic for a long time on Unreal Engine. It's going to help them as developers. Um, probably going to be a lot of crossover events. A lot of Fortnite. A lot of Psyonix. Rocket League stuff. They love crossover stuff. And... Uh, you might even see some Borderlands stuff in, in Rocket League. You might even see some other games from, from the Epic Game Store that might make it into uh, Rocket League now. Um, first party stuff. So check it out, guys, over in RocketLeague.com. They got the details. Silex is joining the Epic family. What does this mean for Rocket League? Not much is going to change if you already play the game. But I think that if you're going to be a new player, you're probably going to have to buy it from the Epic Game Store eventually. Uh when things go down. Check it out, guys. They got the details over there. And for the next story, we're going to talk about the game called Forager. This is a game that I play on my live stream at twitch.tv slash Buona. Forager is a gathering game uh, where you create, explore, and unlock new things to do. Uh, it's a top-down, very, very low-fidelity game. Not a lot of great graphics, but it's colorful and easy on the eyes. And it's one of those busy bee games where you have all these different tasks that you need to do to work towards unlocking other things, work towards, towards unlocking other things. We've seen it in a lot of, it's like one of the core principles of survival games and building games where you need to go through a progression tree. This is progression tree, the game, but it is heavily inspired by Stardew Valley, according to this article. And I agree with that. It is, has a lot of features. Even the, it has the museum, uh, it has like fishing mechanics. It has like market mechanics. Um, and a lot of gathering and foraging, hence the name Forager. 
But one of the things that I found that it didn't have, which I'm happy about, is it didn't have all the the interaction between characters or the romancing and marrying people and all that stuff that Stardew Valley had. And it also doesn't have the energy system of Stardew, Stardew Valley. You don't have to go to sleep. Energy and Forager is managed by food. So as long as you eat, you can keep playing the game. And I felt that uh, Stardew Valley's energy system was a deterrent for me. I didn't like that about the game. Uh, it seemed to always get in the way of my fun. As soon as I started having fun, oh, you got go to you gotta go to sleep. So that got annoying after a while. But this is a sandbox style game. According to this article on launchingparty.com, they, they got their own take on it. Um, it's, a, it's a sandbox game where you can do whatever you want, but there's optional progression paths. You don't have to do anything in a particular order, per se. Um, but there is recommended up, upgrade paths like getting a better uh, foraging tool, um, eventually getting more speed, getting more attack speed, getting weapons, uh, unlocking different buildings like like uh, forges and sewing machines and factories and oil pumps and then working your way up to building even drones and robots. It's a great game in that sense. And uh, it, you can, it can just kill hours. It's one of those games where you just can delete an afternoon and not even know what happened, especially once you get the hang of it. Um, and <laughs> you'll, you'll be sitting there chopping down hundreds of trees. And you're like, why in the world am I doing this? And then you unlock something called a mining rod, which will do it for you. You go, oh, that's why I'm doing it. Eventually, the game turns to what looks like an idle game. You know those idle games where you just sit and watch things happen and you manage progression? Um, you get so much automation going and you get so many resources coming in that uh, that you just it turns it looks like an idle game. It looks like an idle game. It's just like all these things are automatically mining for you. The drones are picking up stuff, and uh, it's it's really fun, really fun. I like idle games, so it's you may not like idling games, but I do. But even then, I think that's sort of an exaggeration. It's not necessarily an idle game. When you get that far, it's just a lot of things, more things get automated and you'll be working on other things. So don't don't think that you won't be doing anything. It just seems like um, the further you progress, the more the mundane things you did in the beginning are automated. I think that's a better way of stating it. Forager, it is really, really fun. I believe it's $20 early access. Let me double check the price on this article. I believe that's what it is. I had a lot of fun. We played it like three or four days on my live stream and um, had a great time, had a great time. Eventually people start to tune out though. It just looks like, it just looks like madness and mayhem. <laughs> it just turns to madness and mayhem at some point. You're just like, Oh my goodness, what's going on? It's just stuff flying everywhere. So if you don't play the game, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to watch. I'm pretty sure it's $20. I don't see it on here, but it's very cheap. It's on steam. Check it out guys. Forager. Forager Review, LaunchParty.com has theirs. I gave you my thoughts on it. Really good game if you're looking for something to kill the time on a lazy spring afternoon. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Star Citizen. Star Citizen is having a free fly week yet again. So if you want to check out Star Citizen and don't want to pay the minimum like $45 for the base starter package, you can. You can head over to RobertsSpaceIndustries.com and check it out. Uh, one of the new things and or two of the new things that you can check out in this update is that they've added a female model that you can play as, as well as there is a city planet, much like Curacao on in Star Wars, uh, that you can fly through and check out all the, the dazzling lights and take the, the tram to different parts and walk around and, uh, just make sure you have enough hardware to support this. I, I have 16 gigs of Ram and I got a Ram warning when I launched the game, which kind of shocked me. Uh, if you don't know, I, I did stream this experience uh, last weekend. I think it was weekend before last. And uh, I was being walked through by some of my community members. And <clears throat> they were teaching me the ropes, essentially, of how to play this game. It's, it's quite different in control scheme from what I'm used to with Elite Dangerous. I do, I, I do know my way around the space sim, though. So that wasn't too hard. It was more about specifics of mechanics. Um, but this is a great time to test your hardware, I think, because this game is like crisis on crack. It's like a hardware, <laughs> hardware <laughs> benchmark game. Um, especially when you go to the, the city planet that I mentioned, um, a lot of the stuff isn't interactable. So it's not like a, a planet full of buildings that you're going to walk in and out f uh, on your free will. 
but uh, you can fly along the surface and you know fly through the buildings and look at all the advertisements. It looks like Blade Runner. Like when I when I went through it, I was kind of kind of pleasantly surprised how much it reminded me of Blade Runner more than anything. It had a had a Blade Runner Neo Tokyo vibe more than anything, which is good. I like that kind of that kind of sci-fi, that kind of space sim stuff um, that you would see. You know, it, it's even something like you would see in like Firefly or uh, Serenity if you saw the movie. Um, very space cowboy like stuff. So I like that kind of stuff, but it does tax your hardware. So be aware of that. It is buggy. I got to admit, like I was going to make a YouTube video about Star Citizen based on those experiences. And uh, I was I was abruptly interrupted by a lot of crashes and bugs. I couldn't even capture enough footage, which shocked me, shocked me. It surprised me. Um, I didn't think it would come to that. So I, I couldn't even get enough footage to record a video. But, you know, it was a, it was a refreshing experience. I got to see how far Star Citizen has come. And it was a refresher to remind me how far Star Citizen needs to go. It has a long ways to go. It's nowhere near, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> it's nowhere near finished. Nowhere near finished. And uh, it's going to take some years of work to get it done. But they're doing some incredible stuff over there. Just needs a lot more time to bake. Check it out, guys. Over on robertspaceindustries.com, Star Citizen has a free week. I believe it ends May 15th. No, that's that's too far away. It's like a week from, no, May 8th, May 8th. I, I went a week too far. Uh May 1st through May 8th, you can play for free. Uh, and I'll put the link in the description where you can see uh, how to get access. So check it out, guys. Star Citizen. Free for a week. And for our final story, we're going to talk about Nintendo. There's no new plans to announce new hardware at E3 2019. According to this article, article over on Gamatsu.com, Nintendo um, says they're always developing internally. But there's not going to be any no, new hardware launches or new hardware announcements this coming E3. We do expect Sony to say something. I think we talked about that on the last episode. Maybe not. I think we did. My memory is starting to fade a little bit of that uh, event. But I, I, And Nintendo is not going to announce any new hardware, which is surprising because I thought they were going to come out with a new variant of the Switch or some kind of 3DS knockoff or 3DS spinoff. Knockoff is a terrible word. Uh, they tend to do that. They tend to release, you know, different variations of the same hardware, more so than Sony and Microsoft do, I think, especially for their handheld stuff. But the Switch is kind of in a unique and weird position because it's, it's a handheld and it's also a console, too. So I don't know how they're going to, what business model is going to apply here. <clears throat> Are they going to apply the 3DS business model or the, the Wii and Wii U business model? Hmm remains to be seen <coughs> i'm sorry excuse me um so not much to look forward to from nintendo in terms of hardware i i'm trying to think of some kind of software other than pokemon that i'm looking forward to what are you guys looking forward to because um we've already gotten zelda we've got mario's uh we've gotten smash those are the big pillars right there that i can think of um and, uh, you know, Pokemon, we've got Pokemon Go, Pokemon Let's Go, and the Pokemon RPG title, which is coming out soon. But I don't know. I don't know what Nintendo is going to do at E3. Usually their tree houses or their Nintendo announcements are pretty, pretty. They're pretty much uh, bigger than what they do at E3, if you ask, my, if you ask me. And uh, you didn't. <laughs> So check it out, guys. Over on Gamaster.com, they got the details. Nintendo has no plans to announce new hardware. I don't know what they're going to announce, but we're going to be watching it very closely. And that concludes episode 136 of Game Chat. When I apologize profusely, I am fighting sinuses, man. It's like I, it's hard for me to say three or four sentences before my throat completely closes up or my nasal passages just decide to do what they want to do. So I, I tried to pace myself accordingly. Took me a lot longer to record this than it normally does, but uh, we got it out. I mean, I've been doing this for a lot, of, a lot of years, and I'm way overdue to have an episode where my sinuses fight me. So, and allergies, especially in the springtime, and it's like 10 o'clock at night, so medicines are starting to wear off and all that kind of stuff. So I apologize, and and I hope you all did enjoy the show. 
and uh, we'll try to do better in the future. Click this follow button everywhere. Buona.tv slash podcast. Twitch.tv slash Buona. YouTube.com slash Buona. Twitter.com slash Buona. Instagram.com slash Buona. Uh, please follow all my stuff. We're going to be doing more B rants over on anchor.fm, I think, slash Buona. I think that's what that podcast is. Um, I'll be able to do some more B rants when I'm not coughing every two minutes. Um, <laughs> I got some fresh ones, man. Ooh. You guys see that Sonic trailer? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a B rants episode right there. That's a hot one. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for listening. I'll see you all next week. Same time, same station. This is Game Chat 1, episode 136. Have a great day. Bye-bye.